You feel something's wrong, you start Googling the symptoms, you read about a life-threatening disease, you start actually feeling the symptoms, and then you need to get your affairs in order. It's a dance as old as time, or at least as old as the internet. In this video, we're gonna discuss health anxiety, why Googling symptoms can sometimes be helpful-ish, and I'll also share something that's really been helpful for me in my own journey with health anxiety and was somewhat self-revelatory, so stay tuned for a revelation. I'm Jack, registered therapist and also no stranger to health anxiety. I've been to numerous appointments, scans, tests, and every time I see my doctor, he always says the same thing. He says, oh, you again. And of course, I've spent many an hour with Mr. Google MD, attempting to self-diagnose and self-soothe. So first, the disclaimer, the anxiety-provoking disclaimer, and that is that if something is wrong, if you feel like something's wrong, you should go and see a doctor, which you should. And I'm certainly not gonna try and convince anyone otherwise. However, I will say this, when you have health anxiety, you think something's wrong all the time, and it's really not sustainable or practical to go and see the doctor all the time. At the peak of my health anxiety, I would leave a doctor's office feeling very calm, feeling very assured, and then before I've even left the building, my health anxiety would kick up again, and it would say, oh, but you didn't explain that symptom well enough, or maybe you should have mentioned this symptom, and... Before I know it, I'm back at the reception desk booking another appointment and they say, what's the appointment for? And I say, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I always thought it'd be nice if one of my parents was a doctor, but alas, my mother was a teacher and my father was a reinsurance manager and both were horrible at delivering a prostate exam. I think Googling symptoms works the same way as going to the doctor. You're constantly seeking reassurance, but with Dr. Google, they're open 24 seven, always ready to hand out a diagnosis. The only side effect is possible debilitating anxiety because the internet is absolutely stacked with worst case scenarios. And another thing that you probably will have experienced if you've had health anxiety is that your mind is very, very powerful and can cause physical symptoms any physical symptoms in the book. Every time I've had some new ailment and I've thought, no, no, this one can't possibly be anxiety, turns out it's anxiety. And of course, when you mention to the doctor that you've got health anxiety, that's it. Health anxiety, you say? Okay. And the problem with Googling symptoms is it sometimes is helpful. Sometimes you might read a forum or watch a video or just read something that gives you some assurance that what you're feeling is fine or it's normal or lots of other people have felt it. And you feel that wonderful dopamine releasing sense of calm. That's when you need to stop. I think that's the only way Googling symptoms works is if you stop then go and do something else, go for a walk, go stroke your cat and let that just ride out for as long as possible. But then inevitably the anxiety will fire up again and go, yeah, but what about that pain in your butt? So how can we actually find some relief from this endless cycle of reassurance seeking? Anxiety is about fear and control. When we think something bad might happen, we look to try to soothe that fear by controlling the situation as best we can. This is why people with social anxiety look to control situations by a avoidance. They don't bother going out. And believe me, I've experienced this before too. When we're in a situation we can't control, our anxiety wreaks havoc. And I realized that with my health, I'm really not in control of that much. I mean, I'm not making my heart beat. I'm not making the food I eat digest and distribute the nutrients around my body. It's just kind of happening. I also got diagnosed with celiac disease last year and had to say au revoir to croissants. I certainly didn't control that. I'd also be making or have made, depending on when you watch this, videos about my celiac disease and how that affected my anxiety and the psychological effect of a diagnosis like that. So like and subscribe if that tickles your pickle. And look, I know that there are certain things that you can control about your health. You can try to eat well, you can exercise, but for the most part, we're not really in control of it. And that's scary. And to try and mitigate that fear, I think we go to the doctor or we try to get Dr. Google to tell us that everything's gonna be okay so that we feel safe, so that we feel secure. I suppose I came to the point where I realized I could continue on this path of fear and control, fear and control, the endless cycle of fear and control, or I could surrender control and try and confront the fear. And what I would say is generally a good tip for anxiety is to follow the fear to its conclusion. So if I was to follow my health anxiety to its natural conclusion, I got to a fear of death. So then is the answer to surrender the idea that I have control and reconcile my relationship with my own mortality and the finiteness of existence in this form, in this world? Put your goggles on, guys. This is about to get deep. These aren't even goggles. I lost my goggles. It was going to be a great joke. Now, I know this is a very complicated and sensitive area, and I'm certainly not saying that we all, all of a sudden, need to be okay with the idea of dying. Don't drink the Kool-Aid just yet. But what I am suggesting is that health anxiety can act as an invitation to contemplate life on a wider scale, to contemplate our own existence and the finiteness and preciousness of life, and to consciously and willingly look at those things that our ego and our health anxiety are trying so desperately for us to not look at. 
I found the work of spiritual teachers like Eckhart Tolle and Alan Watts and Ram Dass really helpful in this area. Author and psychoanalyst Irving Yalom said that when he would ask his patients with death anxiety what about dying they were so afraid of, they would always reply the same, the things they haven't done. This presents a really interesting idea that our health anxiety isn't pointing towards how our lives might end, but how our lives are currently being lived. Using health anxiety as a prompt to reflect on how I'm living my life and am I doing all of the things that I want to do has been a really good way to use something that would otherwise be a weight that just drags me down. What is it that you want to do? Go and do it now. Maybe it's go travel the world. Maybe it's apply for that job. Maybe it's make a YouTube channel, write a song, or maybe it's subscribing to this channel and watching the rest of my videos. Do that and then go do all the other stuff I said. Mm -hmm.